Africa Off-Road Racing. That's right, we're back as we continue picking up our race action at round number two, Zerust. Round number two of the Africa Off-Road Championship Race Series brought to you by N1 4x4 Toyota and Land Cruiser, your four-wheel drive experts in association with Pirelli. Now, change at the front. Venard Dalport in the big 500 has hit the front and he is running and hiding. That's skill as well, check that. One hand drifting through the mud. Now, Venard's got a long, illustrious career behind him as well. We lost him through injury a couple of years back and then the last couple of seasons he came back into the mix racing on a Yamaha two-stroker but he looks so good on this Trax KTM 500 that he has borrowed from Harry Krobler as Harry is trying to get himself back on point with an injured knee. Pierre Joubert for now running good numbers on the quads. Remember he had to retire late in the race on our first event of the season at Horobier Spontain so we'll be hoping that he can keep that truck running. Johan Lubber is doing a nice job as well to stay inside of the mix. And although these riders are absolutely covered in roost, believe me, these are near on perfect riding conditions. So much traction, nice and cool. A couple of mud bogs here and there, but as long as you've got vision and you keep your eyes clear, use those roll-off systems that the guys run on the goggles, like Peter Karama's got going on here, you will have one of your best days of riding ever. That's if you stay away from the thorns as well. Johan Gray on the big 500cc, the 508. Odds on to walk away with the Masters win, but not only that, he may well be able to walk away with a top five overall as he starts to close in on Peter Karam. JJ Brits as well doing a very nice job. You can see the riders by this stage have already run out of vision and they're starting to use their gloves and bits of their shirt to try and wipe off their goggles. You can run these kind of races without goggles, but as soon as you ride up to the back wheel of someone and take their roost, it gets dangerous. Also, you can see those white thorns that the cameraman is focusing on every now and again. One of those goes in your eye, you're in big trouble. So hopefully the guys do keep their goggles on and keep it nice and safe. You can see we run up to the edge of a couple of the farms. So well done and thanks to the farmers for allowing us to use this incredible bit of terrain just around the outskirts of Zerust farmers will have been absolutely loving this late season rain. Hendrik Root looking for a little bit of extra traction there as Aiden Frith still getting to grips with that big 700. Looks like he may well be on point. It's going to be a war between the 700s of himself and Bennett. Tay Perry making a lot of riders feel real bad about themselves as she now climbs her way inside of a top 10 overall. First lady on the road. Peter Ferry. He'll have been passed a couple of k's back by the flying Perry as he tries to maintain his position on track. Most of the regional riders were on for a five lap prediction with our club riders riding a four lap format. P3 in nice shape as well here and definitely looked like he was on a absolute burner getting through and staying ahead of the high elbows of Gav Breckel. Cool jump here as the riders were crossing over the railway tracks. Had to do a little roll off. The marshal was just making sure that everyone was playing the safe game. Breckel, no problems for him. And Robbie Pollock. Again, the riders running off tear offs and using their gloves, whatever they can, just to try and get the vision going. Apart from the splash and dash situation for the bikes, making sure the mechanical systems were running, this race more than most as Theo Barwise comes screaming through on the smoker, more than most was going to be asking of a change of goggles every single lap. Sandra Gray was still inside of a top two for the ladies category as she stayed ahead of Vanny Kirk and Van der Linden. But Tay Perry was way up the road by now. Keith Smith was in the mix there as he started to pick up on our third place quad racer, P.E. Kotzer. Should have climbed a little bit higher than this by now, but I think Kotzer has had some issues out there on the track. Tay Perry running the numbers, Franz Koenig. Making that Yamaha smoker work for it. Johan Moret on the 86. And well done for all of our cameramen and editors, because to try and spot the numbers when these bikes are covered in roost is more than a challenge, believe me. Darby Duper getting the job done to stay ahead of Pierre van der Mulen. Nice numbers here as well, well over 30 riders on the lineup queue, so making it a very popular race series to start out 2018. Remember 12 rounds of the championship run in the Northwest Province, making things nice and busy. 
and we hope that we can get these kind of numbers in every single round. We may yet have round number three in the mud, but round number two has been a huge, huge story about this terrain. But coming in at the end of lap number one, the riders were just all high fives. They said it's absolutely mint conditions. And after all the riders had gone through, a lot of the settled water in the mud box had cleared, and the riders were able to go out and do even faster laps. Rob Pollock, he got rid of his problems of not being able to really surf the mud like he can surf the sand and he was starting to pick up pace at the end of his first flying lap. Franz Koenig and our marshal just making sure no trains are choo-chooing their way down the tracks. Tay Perry always finds a high rock whatever she can to try and put her feet on the ground as she charges through. Jan Vermeulen not trusting the marshal there. Had a long look left and right there as he was crossing the tracks. Very different format for the race this time around. The last couple of rounds of 2017 and the opening round of 2018 had the riders in wide open terrain. This time around, it's the first bush race of the 2018 tour. Duper almost going up and out. Just getting away with that one. Pierre Joubert for now, keeping his Honda running. But we will later find out that mechanical gremlins were once again at his heels. Johan Gray about to eat up the ailing Honda Quad. Lubber, one hand on the trophy as the first of the Yamahas. And Pierre Joubert was working super hard in the wide open sections, complaining that on full gas the bike was down on power and along with that also picking up a late race puncher. The luckless Pierre Joubert. One day, it's all going to go right for him though, because he can and will win races. Van Delport came in to tag his lap before he went out for the next flyer, with Peter Karam now on his wheel. So the 500 and 250 KTMs riding out of Trax KTM and Roos KTM alike were working well together. Wonder how that conversation went. Just reviewing lap number one, talking about how dirty it is out there, more about how fast those guys are going and who's going to lead into the mud this time around. Dylan Landsberg doing a nice job. He was going to be able to get himself up there into a two spot for category as he lay third place on the road so far. Very nice drive coming out of Landsberg. Lubber inside of a top five. Fourth place for him so far and the first of the Yammies. Splash and dash was definitely the call of the day. Mud very similar to sand in the way that it does use a little bit of extra petrol and it does ask more of the bikes. What you do find, mechanically wise though, in the mud, it absolutely cooks brakes and cooks chains. So the riders and the crews are gonna to have to keep a close eye on how the bikes were running. You sometimes find that the moose does collapse in mud as well, and that's because there's a lot more wheel spin happening, which means friction becomes a problem and the moose does melt and break away inside of the tire. The roving marshal just making sure that everyone comes home at the end of lap number one before they go out and attack racing once again. Well done once again to all of the marshals and everyone involved in running the Africa Off-Road Championship Racing Series. Sometimes, especially for the marshals, it is long, hot or either cold, wet days out there on the furthest part of the route. Ono Diedrich and Jacques Leroux giving a nice high five to our marshals. Must be about time for those guys to light their bry. It'll be morning brekkie time. Jocks Leroux getting wild and sideways as Joubert White and Ethan Ferreira team up together. Ferreira though, the faster of the two as he closes down on the junior up ahead. P. Kotzer is probably going to be able to walk away with a third place, but he'll have hoped to run higher pace at this kind of event. Samantha Vanny Kirk still trying to bag and tag a top three finish for the ladies should have been down on power on the smaller capacity Honda 230. Johan Berta, one of our juniors, working hard to get on the pipe as Endis White. And the very well prepped, I must say. Honda CR. Sounds like a 125 smoker. Donovan Mangal of the 223 getting it going. And Hein Perry. Looks like he's been down the road. Bent handlebars down on the right hand side. No big surprise as well. A lot of riders losing the front end, especially on lap number one, whilst they were still getting used to the muddy terrain. Whitey and Eben Fenter come on through. And 
all riders having an incredible fun time out there. Ethan Ferreira made the step up from the 85 to the slightly bigger machine. Theo Barwise would once again be looking to chase down the flag and a win in the junior senior category. So one by one, we start bringing our riders home. Peter Ferri charging hard, really picked up pace. His third and fourth lap were some of the fastest out there. And he'll be looking for some nice results to try and draw a line under his day. Lubber, classy riding style. Get on the gas, lean back, sit on the back of the seat, try and get that traction down. JJ Britt still sitting mid points as well. That's why you sometimes see the back wheel sliding around. The more experienced riders get all the way to the back of the bike and just try and pick up that traction. Robbie Pollock, the big guy from Botswana on the Yamaha. Much better run in the second half of his race as well. He'd eventually go on to tag a top five finish overall. Karam, always the man to beat in this category of racing the 200 cc's. Going to be a fourth place finish for him in the overalls. No doubt a win in the 200s. Jean-Louis Devet as well, just inside of a top 10 overall, beating out on Henrik Root. Root having a nice ride, but he does prefer the sand much more than the mud. You can see it in his lap times. Aiden Frith starting to become a real threat, easing his way into the journey, and everyone has said that first season stepping on the 700 is a tricky one. Tay Perry, 208, yeah, we can see that only just, mainly because we know the style of Tay Perry's riding. She'll be tagged as the top lady finisher as everyone starts to come on home. Well done to our marshals and everyone for getting the job done at this event. It dried off in those second two laps, but that just meant it was even harder to read the riders' numbers, just making out the number 18 of Gav Breckel. Gav would take a top 10 overall. It's a nice, classy ride coming out of Breck. And as everyone brought it home, we referred to the post-race results to see who was there in the breakdowns. OR1, open class. Nice, classy ride for Vaynard Dalport, beating out Landsberg and Lubber. Those guys were on fire. In the 250cc class OR2s, Karam is the man once again ahead of JJ Britz and Tyler January. In the junior seniors, Theo Barwise keeps his nose clean there with another win. And the senior bikes, it was Anton Martin. Looking at the Masters bikes, Johan Gray is the man once again, but Gavin Brickell is right there, not too far off this time around. And in the ladies bikes, it was Tay Perry with a big win after five laps of racing. Quads, Aiden Frith gets his first senior win with the demise of Bennett, Joubert, Kotze and Nobby all DNFing. In the junior bikes, it was Joubert White ahead of Ethan Ferreira and Ethan John Walker making it a top three after two laps of racing. We went down to the pits after the race to catch up with some reactions. My name is Efo Mabe, I'm from Botswana. I came with Lonet team. They invite me this race. I'm always watching the uh, 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 African racing. It makes me feel that I can join this, I can hit this race. And I enjoy the race, only that there's uh, too much mud, but you can manage it and rocks. Hi guys. Um... My name is Robert Pollock. I'm here with our team all the way from Botswana. We came to have a bit of fun. Um, Julinho and Claire from LoadNet brought us out here for the first time today. So hopefully we'll be attending most of your races and awesome event, very well marked. And as you can see, we've got youngsters as well from young to old Madalas. So. <laughs> team Botswana! That is bikes, quads and juniors all done and dusted. Stay with us because after the break, we go into the cars and the buggies and it gets wild.